And now St. Nicholas Abbey also just uh, breaking out in a sweat as he walks around at the start. And I think a few of the jockeys will be pretty pleased when the, the loading up process begins here as we approach the scheduled off time. Robin Hood looks like being one of the first to be offered up. The Brilliant is next in. For Japan, Masked Marvel heading in, proven over further, so again could be one of those that's uh, ridden close to the pace. Reliable man heading forward. In goes Nathaniel. And for back-to-back -back victories, will be the first horse since Swain to accomplish that. Swain in the late 90s, one of the Frankie Tory winners. In goes Daydream, shock winner of last year's arc. A high-quality mare representing Germany. St. Nicholas Abbey, the O'Briens, catapulted Joseph onto the world stage when winning at the Breeders' Cup on the Coronation Cup. Craig Williams, big race successes right around the world in the last two years. Flown in to partner Dunedin, and Sea Moon will be the last. Sea Moon then for the King George VI and Queen Elizabeth Stakes, sponsored by Betfair. A mile and a half, the field all loaded away. And they're off and racing. Robin Hood, the potential pacemaker, slept a little bit in the stalls, and early on, Dunedin has ridden in a handy position, in danger of cutting the pacemaker off at the pass. Early on, Nathaniel, and also Brown Panther, the door being left open for Robin Hood, but Dunedin's racing keenly on the descent, and Brown Panther also a little free towards the outside. Nathaniel settles in fourth place with Daydream early on, Deep Brilliant, the three-year-old for Japan, Red Cap, settles in about sixth, just ahead of Masked Marvel, who's seventh reliable man, Sea Moon and St. Nicholas Abbey at the rear of the field. So Robin Hood has got to the lead, but it's taken a little while. Leads from Dunedin, who shows in second place, being ridden more handily this afternoon under Craig Williams. Racing in third is Brown Panther, and now they're just beginning to string out. Nathaniel drops into fourth. Daisy chain formation for the leaders with Deep Brilliant posted three wide as they approach the turn with Dane Dream. Masked Marvel, Reliable Man, Sea Moon still held up at the rear of the field. And St. Nicholas Abbey is last of all and will be a good 15 lengths behind the pace setting Robin Hood who is pressing on passing seven. Robin Hood leads the King George field by four lengths from Dunedin in second. Brown Panther race is third. Nathaniel is in fourth place. Dane Dream for Germany on the inside of Deep Brilliant for Japan race fifth and sixth. Still no move yet from Sea Moon who's won from the rear or St. Nicholas Abbey who is the back marker so five and a half furlongs to travel Robin Hood out in front Dunedin just moving off the fence in case the pacemaker drops his lap in third place races Brown Panther Nathaniel is fourth ahead of Daydream who's in fifth place at this stage in the orange jacket then Deep Brilliant just ahead of Mars Marvel Reliable Man Sea Moon and still St. Nicholas Abbey post them a start Robin Hood's tenure of the lead is about to be uh, taken over as they turn by Dunedin who moves to the front with Brown Panther neither wish to commit at this stage, just sauntering along. Dane Dream, Nathaniel, the next pair from Deep Brilliant, Sea Moon looking for a passage amongst horses, and St. Nicholas Abbey is still last on straightening. It's Dunedin out in front for Craig Williams. From in second place, Brown Panther running a mighty race. Nathaniel, a Dane Dream, just a bit short of room, has to angle out. Fast Marvel, Sea Moon, St. Nicholas Abbey have been caught with a lot to do. Nathaniel moves through to the lead once again in the King George. From in second place, Dane Dream, Dunedin can't go on. Reliable man, St. Nicholas Abbey. Nathaniel out in front. From the German filly, Dane Dream, who once again is out after the leader. Nathaniel bidding for back-to-back -back in George's. Dane Dream and neck down. Nathaniel, all courage, all heart. Dane Dream lunges above the head. Above the head, an international push to the King George. Jockeys look at each other. They don't know. I don't know. Nathaniel and Dane Dream, reliable man, Sir Nicholas Abbey, involved in places with Dunedin, Sea Moon, Brown Panther. in ranks a nose as you'd expect and one and a half lengths 231.62 seconds that's 1.62 seconds above standard Andras Stark is absolutely delighted Dane Dream parading in front of the stands here now it was a strange race early on because Robin Hood couldn't get to the to the front Duna Den had to carry out the donkey work and at every chance, Kieran Fallon had Brown Panther in a perfect position, as indeed did here when Nathaniel struck for home. You thought, well, this could be it. Now, for me, the one that's been given a heck of a lot to do, St. Nicholas Abbey has come from absolutely miles back.
and it's to the Colts' eternal credit he's only been beaten a length and a half. Reliable man, well, I guess he's lived up to his name. He's put up another good effort. Sea Moon has run flat. There's no doubt about that. The second horse of Sir Michael's this afternoon to have done that. There's the, there's the evidence that Dane Dream has won the King George for Germany here. Back to the studio for reflections. Well, Mike, we said there was such strength in depth here. This is an arc winner, not just an arc winner, one of the most impressive arc winners of the last decade or so. And, and yes, she ran a bit poorly last time in a muddling sort of race, but she's run a stormer today, Dane Dream, to get the better of Nathaniel, who's proved once again he's a genuine Group 1 performer. Um, um, Mike was making the point there, Graham, that maybe, maybe C Moon, uh, sorry, um, Nathaniel has been... Uh, so Nicholas Abbey has been given too much to do there by Joseph O'Brien. I think the same is true of C. Moon, actually. Let's follow it through. You can see that Joseph O'Brien wants to drop out to Nicholas Abbey, but even at this stage, here in the studio, you and I are saying there's some very good mm. proven Group 1 staying horses in front of you. They're a long way back, aren't they, that pair? They're an awful long way back. Um, in their defence, this is the way that both of them are usually ridden. Mm. C. Moon and St. Nicholas Abbey do usually come from a long way off the pace. But even so, this is such a strong King George. You've got some really top class animals in front of you, arc winners, eclipse winners, and you're spotting them five or six length start. A Melbourne Cup winner in front of Melbourne you. Melbourne Cup winner, well ahead, yeah. So, um, you know, St Nicholas Abbey is, uh, is the one, really. If you look here, he's Joe's actually detached now. He's detached last, he's, he's two lengths behind Sea Moon here, and he comes home to finish third. Now, uh, you know, he definitely looks like he's, he's a long, long way off the pace here. Yeah, and the pacemaker we, we have to slightly ignore, don't we? Because we know that Robin Hood has been sent to the front in order to, to guarantee a, a strong pace. So uh, it's not it, the issue is not how fast they're going. The issue is, is A, how fast they're going, combined with your position relative to the, uh, uh, the pace. And the pace here, Dunedin, Brown Panther, but tucked in behind them, you've got, very, you've, got, uh, you've got a St. Ledger winner and you've got an arc winner, and you're still giving them five or six lengths, even now. Yeah, you're giving them an awful lot of rope here, the class horses in the field who are really well placed as well they're in an absolute ideal position Nathaniel and Dane Dream if you look here coming off the home bend mm. the two riders Andrew Starker and uh, William Buick they're right in the right places and look at William Buick now he wants to get close now doesn't yeah, he he knows here. where he needs to and be and if you look at Joseph O'Brien here he's still on the bridle here and I think it's only been now when Joseph O'Brien really begins to press the button and you yeah. can see it's suddenly panic stations it's straight to the whip there's no real push well, in there it's straight to the whip. Ditto Ryan Moore on, on Seaman. I, I think you're right the, the, the biggest culprit if you like is Joseph O'Brien on, on St Nicholas Abbey but I think Seaman's been given a, a ton to do as well I'm not sure that was his run flat I think he's probably run his race but I think it's fair to say that Sea Moon has obviously been given a lot, a lot to do too, um, and I, I think the, the biggest problem for those two riders, Joseph O'Brien and, and Ryan Moore, is the fact that the class of the horse they've got in front of them. You know, if if it wasn't an Arc winner and an Eclipse winner that they've got in front of them, then they probably do come through and pick them up. Mm. But when you're in a, a race that uh, that is so hot. Um, and you're giving such class horses so much rope up front, they're, they're difficult to peg back. Mm. And the class horses, Nathaniel and, and Dane Dream, they were good enough to, to hold off um, the late challenges of St. Nicholas Abbey and Sea Moon, who were flying, yeah. but, but just they, they couldn't get there. Well in front of I, I'd say St. Nicholas Abbey a little bit fortunate to get third, actually. I think Olivier Pellier just, um, just perhaps easing up here on the grey reliable man. He'd been hard at work for a long time, in fairness, reliable man talking through my pocket, having hopes that Reliable Man would hit the frame. <laughs> but have a look at this. Two jockeys going hammers and tongs here, Starker and Buick, and they turn to each other. Did you get it? Not sure, bud. But Andreas Starker got it. The German 